Welcome to this presentation on reducing anxiety. So the agenda for today is to cover a bit about me, who I am and my own experiences with anxiety. And then we're going to talk about what anxiety is, what causes anxiety, reasons that we experience anxiety, why everyone gets anxious and why it can never be completely eliminated. And then we're going to look at techniques to reduce anxiety, such as EFT, emotional freedom technique, mindfulness, breathing techniques, hypnosis and meditation. And then finally, uh, we're going to discuss what you can do next to stop anxiety controlling your life. And you can ask me any questions. So this is me in 2019 in Dublin. Um, I am a hypnotherapist. And last year in 2019, I was awarded the Professional Achievement Award and announced the best hypnotherapist in Windsor, Berkshire. Um, I became interested in hypnotherapy uh, due to my own issues and struggles with anxiety. Uh, I'd had, I grew up in quite a dysfunctional family and I had quite a lot of um, anxiety. Um, so I started studying neurolinguistic programming and mindfulness, EFT and cognitive behavioural therapy. And I found hypnosis to be the most effective modality to help with my anxiety issues. So what is anxiety? Anxiety is a natural response to danger. And if you were in a situation where you were being chased by a grizzly bear or a dangerous, dangerous animal, um, you'd find the effects of anxiety to be very useful, such as the increased heart rate, which would increase the blood flow to your muscles. Um, and when we are in fear, the blood actually flows to the legs. Um, when we're angry, it flows to our hands so that we can um, pick up a weapon or fight. Um, so you'd experience increased heart rate, restlessness, nausea, sweating, um, faster breathing so that you could get more air into your body and make your escape. The long-term effects of anxiety are a reduced immune system. If you're in immediate danger, the last thing you need to worry about is colds and viruses and bacteria. So that energy is diverted um, away from your immune system. You can also experience poor sleep and headaches. Many anxiety sufferers hold tension in their necks and they experience a lot of migraines and neck issues. You also can experience a reduced social circle. I had trouble um, socialising and I had relationship issues. I struggled with work and some days I couldn't go to work because I was too anxious. And uh, this resulted in a reduced income. Um, and because anxiety is a natural response to danger, it can never be completely eliminated. But with the techniques I'm going to show you today, it can be reduced. So anxiety is a big problem. And uh, 25% of the UK suffers with anxiety or depression or both. Mixed anxiety and depression is the most common mental disorder with 9% of people meeting criteria for diagnosis. 
So who's heard of Ivan Pavlov? Let me know in the chat box if you've heard of Ivan Pavlov. Got some fireworks going off. Sarah says no. Anyone else? Okay, so. Yes, no. Excellent. Okay, so Ivan Pavlov was a Okay, cool. Ivan Pavlov was a Russian physiologist and he wanted to do some research into dog saliva. So he got some dogs and he tied them up and he sprayed their faces with meat powder, which made them salivate. And he set an alarm to remind him to do this. I'm guessing he set an alarm because a bell would ring. And after a while, he noticed that the dogs began salivating before he sprayed them with the meat powder. So on hearing the bell, they were salivating. And so he didn't need to spray them with meat powder to make them salivate anymore. Uh, they just needed to hear the bell. And this is called a conditioned response. So for many people, anxiety can be triggered in a similar way. For me, I had all sorts of um, issues from childhood and lots of different things would remind me of them and I would get anxious and, um, uncomfortable. So what triggers your anxiety? Let me know in the chat box if there's anything specific that makes you anxious. Alcohol. Mm hmm. Cool. OK, so. What can we do to reduce anxiety? People not listening. <laughs> OK, so what can we do to reduce anxiety? The First thing, uh, well, one thing you can do is to chew gum. And the theory behind chewing, yep. The theory behind chewing is that it tells your stomach you're about to eat. And if you were in an immediate danger, um, you wouldn't be having time for a snack. So by chewing, you trigger the relaxation response and your parasympathetic nervous system, which is what's um, triggered when you're anxious, that gets shut down and you move to the sympath sympathetic nervous system, which is the, the relaxation response, your relaxed state. And chewing gum has actually been scientifically proven to um, reduce stress and improve focus. If you see uh, football managers, you know it's a lot of them choose chew gum because it helps them to concentrate. Um, another thing you can do is breathing. And there's a couple of breathing exercises. Uh, one is called box breathing, and that involves breathing in for the count of five, holding your breath for the count of five, breathing out for the count of five, and then holding the space between breaths for the count of five. So if you'd like to try that now, just breathe in for the count of five, 
hold your breath for five. Breathe out for five. And then hold the space between breaths for five. And doing that, you should notice your anxiety level starting to reduce. Another thing you can do is called 7-Eleven breathing. And that involves breathing in for the count of seven and breathing out for the count of 11. And again, the theory is that by if you were in an immediate state of danger, you wouldn't be breathing out for longer than you're breathing in. So by making the, e the out breath longer than the in breath, you're again telling your mind it's safe. So if you'd like to try that now, just breathing in for the count of seven. And then just breathing out for 11. Okay, and something else we can do is called EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. So um, just using the chat box, let me know on a scale of, okay. So first of all, what we need to do is take a SUD score. SUD stands for SID Muda significant unit of distress so on a scale of one to ten one being relaxed ten being really really anxious whereabouts are your anxiety levels right now let me know in the chat box sarah's one that's nice and relaxed Four, five, two to three. Okay, excellent. So you're all nice and relaxed. Okay, Margaret's a six. Okay, so let's see if we can we can get that down. So what you do, first of all, you would tap the side of the hand, and this is known as the setup so you'd say even though i have anxiety i truly deeply and completely accept myself even though i have anxiety i truly deeply and completely accept myself and you can do it on either hand and you'd say that five times and then once you've done that You'd move to the top of the head and you'd start tapping there and you'd say this anxiety. And then between the eyebrow and the nose, this anxiety. And the theory with EFT is it works on the meridian points around the body, side of the eye. And in Chinese medicine, they believe that if we have blockages around these meridians, it creates bad feeling. And then under the eye. So you can use EFT for a number of different, um, well, any issues, you know, emotions. You can use it for anger. You can use it for pain. It does not just anxiety, you can use it for anything. And then you go under the nose, between the nose and the top lip, this anxiety. And then between the bottom lip and the chin, this anxiety. And then on the collarbone, this anxiety. Under the arm, so if you're a woman, it would be on the bra strap, this anxiety. And then once you've gone through all that, you check your SUD score again, your 
can't say it today, significant unit of distress. And you'd once again get that score and see if it's gone down. And if it hasn't gone down, you'd run through the sequence again until you're able to bring it down. And once you've brought it down, you would start tapping either side of the fingernail and you'd say this anxiety the first finger this anxiety the second finger again either side of the nail you'd miss the third finger and go to the little finger this anxiety again on the chop point and then between the um, little finger and the third finger, between the tendons there, it's known as the gamut point. So you tap there and you'd look down to the right and then you'd look down to the left. You can have a tune like happy birthday you roll the eyes around clockwise, and then roll them around anti-clockwise. Count from one to five, close the eyes, open the eyes, and then count from five down to one. And then just take a deep breath in and see how you're feeling, see how your sad score is now. So, is anyone... Following along with that, notice any improvement in their SUD score. Let me know. Excellent. So it went down a little bit, right? Brilliant. Okay. And then another breathing technique we can do. Cool. Another breathing technique we can do is called heart coherence. So what you do, you take a deep breath in, breathe out. And you can either close your eyes or keep your eyes open. And as you breathe in, just imagine the air flowing through your heart and into your lungs. And as you breathe out, imagine it going from the lungs through the heart and coming back out. So by doing this, we can slow the heart rate down and help ourselves to feel more relaxed. So when you change one part of the system, systems theory says when you change one part of the system, you change all parts of the system. So your anxiety may be caused by ang anxious thoughts, or it may be caused by, um, you know, a situation, um, and it triggers all those uh, physical responses. But by changing one of those physical responses, we can start to change the system as a whole and induce the relaxation response. So one way we can do that is with the heart coherence breathing. Okay, and then hypnosis to reduce anxiety. Um, and Lao Tzu said, if you are depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. And if you're at peace, you're living in the present. And so hypnosis is a very effective way 
to reduce anxiety partly because it enables us to focus more on the present moment um, and hypnosis is not sleep uh, many people think it's like sleep it's not sleep um, it's not something that's done to you it's something that's done with you and it's a focused state of attention so if you've ever been driving your car got into your destination not remembered the journey that would be a state of hypnosis if you've ever been watching tv and completely zoned out and when you check your watch it's time for bed that would be a state of hypnosis reading a book um, and you could also experience it when you're playing a sport if you're playing a sport and you sustain a small injury like a nick or a cut and you don't notice you keep playing and then afterwards you finish playing and you notice then that that would be because you've been in, had a focused state of attention so it's a trance state um, and it can be a deeply relaxing state um, we all go through different brainwave states throughout the course of the day they are gamma and beta these are waking brainwave states and then alpha when we start to relax when we sit down um, and if you just close your eyes you'll automatically go into the alpha brainwave state and then there's theta theta is part of the REM sleep cycle um, and it's the part where we're starting to just drift off to sleep um, and one of the features of the theta brainwave state is that it enables us to envisage things better so our imagination is improved and research has shown that until the age of seven a child's brain waves are mostly in the theta brainwave state it's also considered to be a hyper learning state and then after theta comes delta which is the deep sleep um, part of the sleep sleep cycle it's when your body's releasing hormones and repairing itself and so with hypnosis we're looking to access the theta state and the more you experience trance, the deeper you can go into trance. This is known as fractionation. Um, another, you know, benefit is that the more you relax, the, the more your overall state of relaxation will start to come down. The more, you know, the easier you'll find relaxing. Um, and then there's the power of your mind, the reticular activating system. In our brains, we've got a, a walnut shaped part of the brain, which is in the brainstem, and it's called the reticular activating system. And what that does, there's lots of different data going on all around us. Um, around 14,000 different bits of data being picked up by our senses um, every moment. And so if all of these things were made available to our conscious mind, it would go into meltdown. So we have the reticular activating system, which sorts information and finds the most relevant information to us. Um, so if you are in a state of anxiety, you'll find more things to be anxious of. Um, when you're in a state of fear you get tunnel vision and you become focused on the threat and so everything looks like the threat um, so one way that we can start to change this is with journaling and positive thinking um, looking for things to be you know grateful for and another thing that we can use hypnosis for is to visualize ourselves karma and 
more relaxed. And when we do this, we create new neural pathways in the brain. And these help us to become a more relaxed person. So I'd like to show you some exercises to prove the power of your mind. So what I'd like you to do, um, if you've got a bad back, don't do this. If you haven't, I'd like you to twist round just your upper body, leaving your, your lower torso. No problem, Rack, thank you. Leave your lower torso steady on the chair and just point your hand out in front of you and twist round. And just see how far you can go, just twisting your upper body. And then just notice where you've gone to. Uh, come back to the center if you haven't already. Take a deep breath in. Close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, imagine twisting round in your head. Imagine, you can imagine twisting all the way around if you want. Just imagine doing that now. And then open your eyes and once again, point out your hand once again and twist round again. And the second time you should notice that you're able to get further. Did you get further, Sarah? Excellent. Anyone else? Yep. Cool. Okay. Another thing we can do is to imagine. <laughs> There's no magic. Another thing we can do is to imagine sucking a lemon. So again, take a deep breath in, close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, imagine walking into your kitchen. Imagine there's a lemon on the side there. And you pick that lemon up and put it on a chopping board. Get a knife. And cut that lemon in half. And then cut it, cut it in a quarter. And then cut that quarter again if you want and just imagine picking up that bit of lemon and putting it in your mouth and biting down on it and when you do that you should notice your mouth starting to water Have you done, if you notice that, let me know in the chat. Excellent. Did you notice your mouth salivating when you were thinking about sucking on the lemon, Sarah? Cool.
cool. Okay. Now another thing we can do. Fabulous. Another thing we can do is to hold our left hand out with our palm facing up and our right hand out with our palm facing down like that. And then close your eyes, take a deep breath in and I'd like you to imagine that in your left hand, you've placed some heavy books. And to your right hand, we've tied some helium balloons. And the helium balloons are lifting your right hand up. And those heavy books are making the left hand lower down. Just imagine that happening. And then leaving your hands where they are, open your eyes and just notice any difference. And you know, if you noticed any difference in those hands, let me know in the chat box. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Okay, so that's the power of your imagination and anxiety can work in a very similar way. We often imagine scenarios which cause us to feel anxious and your mind can't tell the difference between a real or imagined state. So when we imagine these things, we, like I say, our mind can't tell the difference. So again, that's why hypnosis works because we can imagine ourselves being more relaxed and that helps us to create those new neural pathways and reach new levels of relaxation. So who would like to try some hypnosis? Let me know in the chat box. Yes, excellent. Okay. Okay, brilliant. All right, so <sighs> hypnosis, as I said, is a perfectly natural state. It's a state we all experience several times during the course of a day. Um, but if you suffer with epilepsy, it's not recommended that you experience hypnosis. So if you do, um, ignore this next bit. Okay, so make yourselves comfortable. And if you've got your legs crossed, uncross them. Or, well, you can sit with your legs crossed if you want, but your feet, if your feet are crossed, it's best to uncross them because you can actually relax more with your feet flat on the floor. And then 
once you've done that take a deep breath in and as you breathe out just allow your eyes to close With your eyes closed you can begin to focus on your breath Now it's the in-breath and the out-breath. And if any thoughts should come into your mind, just imagine placing them into a tiny bubble and allowing it to drift up and away. Breathing all the way down into your belly. And as you breathe in, notice your stomach rising. As you breathe out, notice it falling. See if you can notice any difference between the breath. Maybe the in breath is slightly cooler than the out breath. It's becoming more and more relaxed with every breath. I wonder if you can imagine yourself. walking outdoors on a, a lovely day just the kind of weather you like maybe the sun is shining the birds are singing in the trees maybe you're on a beach and you can feel the sand beneath your toes, hear the waves lapping on the shore. I wonder if you've ever laid down on a warm sunny day maybe in a park or a garden you know the kind of bright day when you look at the sun with your eyes closed somehow you can still see that bright light through your eyelids Breathe gently and remembering what it's like to relax and let go, to lie down on a grassy slope somewhere, feeling that warm sun on your skin and on a warm day you can feel so drowsy so ready to drift away maybe you can imagine wonder what you would hear maybe you can hear people talking in the background children playing, traffic off in the distance. Just imagine any noises being turned right down like a radio. So you just become more and more 
peacefully relax. Just feeling yourself supported, your own weight pressing down. Maybe there's a gentle breeze and the warm sun. And as you lie there, every muscle can become limp and loose. And it can feel so good to just totally relax. So just let everything go. And your conscious mind can drift off as your unconscious mind becomes more aware, more alert, more awake. And we all have a unconscious mind that's always there in the background, looking to keep us safe. And the unconscious knows just how much to let go. And as a child, you learn to let go, to let go of your bottle when you'd had enough. Learning to walk, you learn to pick yourself up and let go when you are ready to take those first steps. And children just unconsciously know to either keep their hands out in front of them or up in the air as they take those first steps. And that's just their unconscious mind looking to keep them safe. So you can allow your unconscious to take control. Maybe you can remember back to a time, a simpler time when you could just enjoy that peace and calm. Just think how good it is to enjoy relaxing. Nothing to do, nothing to worry about. Looking in the sky, you can see that there are clouds. As those clouds drift across the sky, you notice them drifting slowly from one side to the other. And as those clouds go down towards the horizon, as you watch them, gently floating and you count the clouds going by and as they go off there are ten left and then one disappears and there's nine down to eight seven and with each cloud you feel yourself becoming more and more relaxed more and more at ease and then there's six and those clouds are just drifting down gently. And five, four, each cloud just disappearing, allowing you to feel more relaxed, more at ease. And three and two, and then there's just one cloud left. I wonder if you can imagine yourself being safely and securely surrounded by that warm, fleecy cloud. It's drifting along, feeling completely relaxed. And looking down at yourself, just lying there, relaxed. As you see yourself there, you can start to 
look across your timeline. Maybe see times in the past when you felt anxious. And it can be like when you're watching a film on TV. You've got a TV on, but you're doing something else. And the TV is just noise. Anything can be playing out on that TV. Could be something scary or something good. Doesn't matter because your mind is occupied elsewhere. Just looking down at that version of you in those old anxious situations you can just get a sense of that now. It's like there's a barrier between that anxious version of you and that version of you that's safely and securely supported in that cloud. Maybe you can imagine yourself being able to change that situation in some way. Maybe sending that version of you down to, to change things just slightly, allowing you to feel more relaxed, more comfortable in those old times, places, allowing that to happen now. And considering how you'll be able to take that confidence and relaxation into the future. Maybe seeing yourself standing confidently, dealing with anything that may have bothered you in the past. Dealing with it confident. Maybe you can get a sense of yourself. Smiling to yourself. Either then or now. Then when you're ready. You can open your eyes. And come back to the present. Noticing how good you feel. And over the coming days and weeks. You can be curious as to what you'll notice that will let you know that things have begun to change. So when you're back, let me know in the chat box, let me know if you liked that little hypnosis session. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Okay, so excellent. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear you all liked it. Okay, so anxiety is a learned response. And it's said that children are only born with two fears, the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. And everything else is learned as we grow. And in times gone past, it was essential that we learned what was safe and what wasn't fast. So we watch our parents and other tribe members to know what we should and what we shouldn't fear. And 
Thank you. And it said that the current generation of people, you know, well, the current generation of people have um, evolved from the most uh, anxious of our ancestors because the ancestors or the people in the past, in prehistoric times, who were chilled out and relaxed, um, you know, just strolling around, were getting picked off by pterodactyls and things. So the um, anxious people uh, got to live and pass on their genes. Um, so the most anxious people uh, got to have children and pass on those fears and that anxiety. Um, and so children also pick up fears by watching their parents. And it's said that around 80% of children pick up phobias from their parents. Um, so has anyone picked up any phobias in childhood? Let me know in the chat box. So just as fears and phobias can be learned from parents, so can anxiety. And if you're regularly witnessing your mother or father in a state of anxiety, you get to learn that the world is not a safe place. And that can have a lasting effect on the child. Um, and as I said previously, children look to their primary caregivers for feedback on the environment and also about themselves. So if your primary caregiver is traumatised in some way, um, they may pass that on to you by putting you down, um, by being abusive and the child, as children, we internalise that abuse. We think it means there's something wrong with us and that can cause us to, again, cre create anxiety and make us feel anxious and low self-esteem. It can also um, manifest into CPTSD, that's Complex Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder. And it's said that around 80% of people actually suffer with complex PTSD um, because parents, um, they're, they're just traumatized and they pass it on to their children. This is known as reenactment. So whatever you don't heal, you pass on to your own children um, and keep or keep repeating. So that is uh, the presentation. Does anyone have any questions, anything you'd like to know? Let me know in the chat box.